Now, the first lab topic, there's good news and bad news. All right? So they always say, traditionally, you want the bad news first, so then you can hear the good news. So what's the bad news? The very first lab topic involves math. Uh, you say, okay, fine. So what's the good news? The good news is, uh, this is all, essentially almost the only t uh, lab topic that is math. Why math? I mean, this is a biology class. Why talk about math? If you uh, have lecture, especially if you have me for lecture, uh, I defined what science is. And the way I define science is that one of the pursuits of science is to collect measurable facts about the world. So what's a measurable fact? A measurable fact is when you weigh yourself. You go to a scale, you weigh yourself, and that's a fact about how much you weigh. If you uh, put a thermometer in your mouth and you take your temperature, that's a fact, a measured fact about your body temperature. If you uh, see how tall you are, that's a measurable fact about how tall you are. In science, they measure everything. They measure the uh, weight of the human brain. They measure the normal resting heart rate. They measure your blood pressure. Uh, they measure the cholesterol concentrations in your bloodstream. They measure the amount of salt in your urine. So everything uh, is measured. These become facts about you or about the world. So science does a lot of measuring. It's true in biology, it's true in medicine, it's true in astronomy, where they measure the temperature of the atmosphere of the planet Venus, they measure the gravitational pull on the moon, uh, they measure uh, the uh, 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 chemical composition of the atmosphere on Jupiter. So everybody in science is measuring stuff. And that means we need to know a little bit about numbers and, and units of how to measure things, because we will be doing some measuring in this class. Now, uh, in science, we commonly deal with uh, really large numbers and really small numbers. Uh, unfortunately, we're not always dealing with, you know, numbers between 1 and uh, uh, 300. Sometimes we're dealing with really small numbers and very, very large numbers. So, uh, when we start to write really small numbers or really big numbers, it gets really complicated. And so we use in science something known as exponential or scientific notation. Let me give you some examples of big and small numbers. We wrote that there's about this many cells in, a, in a, making up a person. How many cells is that? What's that number? What's that number? Yeah. It's a hundred trillion. All right, but the problem is if you were going to write that number down, you know, it's a, there's actually uh, 11 zeros. And after all, you might miscount and actually leave out a zero or put an extra zero in. It's a 100 trillion, right? Some people don't believe me, right? That's the thousand, million, billion, trillion, hundred trillion. So uh, that's why we want to have another way of writing really large numbers. What's an example of really, uh, and incidentally, the way we would write this in exponential notation is 1 times 10 to the 14th. And we're going to explain in a moment how we do that, but in essence, there's 14 zeros here. So instead of actually writing 14 zeros, we just write 10 to the 14th. That makes it easier. So it's sure, certainly a lot easier to write this than to write this. Now sometimes we're dealing with really small numbers. Uh, the weight of a protein, uh, in, the, uh, in all living things, living things are mostly made out of water, and after water, the next major type of chemical that makes up living things are called proteins. So there are proteins in the human body, there are proteins in chicken, there are proteins in beans, right? So you, some of you, anybody a vegetarian in the class? So, Right? Beans are a good source of protein, right? And meat is a good source of protein. So how much does a protein weigh? Well, this is a typical weight of a protein in grams. Now, I'm not even going to ask you to tell me what, how, what that is because I have no idea what that is. But if you had to write that number, you know, point oh zero 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 three seven five grams, it would be really easy to a, either put an extra zero or leave out a zero because you get mixed up with all those, you know, it's a very small number. So in exponential notation, instead of writing 
the number out like this. We write the number like this. And it's 3.75 times 10 to the minus 18 grams. And that's certainly a lot easier to write than this. So this is called exponential notation. So let's explain how to convert any regular number into exponential notation. So in the third paragraph, I basically gave you two steps. Right? Here's step one and step two. So the first step is when you have any regular number, move the decimal point so that there is only one non-zero, I'm just reading this, one non-zero digit to the left of the decimal. I know you're probably thinking, I don't know what that means. I'm going to show you an example of that. And number two, uh, determine the exponent by counting the number of places you move the decimal point. If the number is greater than one, the exponent is positive, while if the number is less than one, the exponent is negative. And we're all probably thinking, I have no idea what he just said. So let's look at an example. Now, uh, let's say we have the number 3,200. Now, admittedly, 3,200 is not a really big number. It's not a really small number. So this is an easy number to just write out. But I want to give you an, use that as an example of how would I convert that to what's called exponential notation. Now, the first point is when you have the number 3,200, where's the decimal point? When the decimal point comes at the end, they commonly just leave it off. If you were just writing 3,200, you'd probably just write it like that. But the decimal point is right there at the end. Now, in order to convert this to exponential notation, what did we say we do? The first step says move the decimal point so that there is only one non-zero digit to the left of it. You'd say, what? Here's the decimal point. We're going to move that decimal point so that there's only one number to the left of it. So I'm going to move that decimal point one, one, two, three places and put it right there so it becomes 3.200. Does everybody see what I just did? I moved the decimal point so that there's only one number to the left of it. Now it's 3.2, and if you wrote 3.200, that's okay. You don't have to keep those zeros there. You could just leave, drop them, but I won't take off if you keep them there. So whether you write 3.2 or 3.200, either way. Now, we're ha oh, most of the way there. Now, what we do is we now write times 10, times 10, and the exponent that we put above the 10 is based on how many places we move the decimal point. So how many places did we move that decimal point? One, two, three places. So we write 10 to the third. So the way we would write 3,200 in what's called exponential notation form, and it's called that because we're using an exponent, uh, is we would write it 3.2 times 10 to the third. Now you might say, okay, I think I could do that, but I don't understand what this means. Let me explain what this means. You may learned a long time ago when you were learning arithmetic that these are the tens places, the one hundreds places, the thousands places. Remember that? The ten, uh, tens, hundreds, thousands. Remember that? So every time you move that decimal point, you're changing the value of the number by a factor of ten. So here we've got 3.2. We change the value of this number by a factor of ten three times. So if you take 3.2 and multiply it times 10 three times, you'll get that original number. 3.2 times 10 is 32. Times 10 again is 320. Times 10 a third time is 3,200. So all we're saying is that if we took 3.2 and multiplied it times 10 three times, it would be the original number we started out with. That's all that we're talking about. I, that was a number bigger than 1, 3,200. The exponent was positive. Let's look at a little number, a small number. Here's a number, 0.032. All right, use the same numbers, but the decimal point is right here. Now, uh, what is, what, how are we supposed to do this again? We said in step 1, move the decimal point so that there is one non-zero digit to the left of it. You'd say, what? Okay, here's the decimal point. Now, do I move the decimal point this way? No, that doesn't make any sense. 
I'm going to move, in this case, the decimal point this way, and I want to move it this way until there's one number to the left of it, other than a zero. So if I move the decimal point and put it here, is that right? No, because no, there's a zero there. It can't be a zero. So now let me move it one more place, a second time, and now it's 3.2. So if I make it 3.2, can everybody see there's a, one number to the left of my decimal point, and it's not a zero. So it's now 3.2, and how many places did I move that decimal point? I moved it two places. So I'm going to write times 10 to the 2, but I'm going to write minus 2. You say, yeah, why? I'm going to write minus 2 because the original number is smaller than 1. If the original number was bigger than 1, we make it a positive exponent. If the original number was less than 1, we make it a minus exponent. So this becomes 3.2 times 10 to the minus 2. Obviously, if it was 3.2 to the 10 to, uh, to a plus 2 or 3, that would be a big number. So this is a number smaller than 1. Now again, you might say, okay, maybe I can do, learn to do this, but I don't understand what a 10 to the minus 2 means. All right, what that means is that instead of multiplying times 10, you're actually multiplying times 1 over 10, 1 tenth when you write a minus exponent. So if I multiply 3.2 times 1 tenth, that's 0.32. Times 1 tenth a second time is 0 0.032. Does everybody follow that? So that's really what this means. So exponential notation is just a, a certain way that we use to write numbers in a somewhat simplified way. Now admittedly, these examples I'm giving you are really easy numbers. But in science, we often deal with big and very small numbers where exponential notation becomes essential. Now, a third example, 45.67, a really easy number. It, first of all, is that number bigger than 1 or smaller than 1? 45 point, it's bigger, so we're going to use a positive exponent, not a negative. And we're just going to move the decimal so there's one number to the left of it. So it becomes 4.567. How many places did we move that decimal point? One, one place. So it's 4.567 times 10 to the 1. So we just, uh, uh, the, all we're saying is if we multiply 4.567 times 10 one time, that's 45.67. Let's try uh, another one. Here's 1,000. So usually, again, when the, ex, when the des, decimal point comes at the end, we kind of don't even write it, but there it is. So uh, how do I write 1,000 and in exponential notation form? I move the decimal point, so there's one number, and it cannot be a zero, one number, a non-zero number to the left of it. So it becomes one times, and how many places did I move that decimal point? Three places. So one times 10 to the third. <clears throat> now, it's a positive exponent because the original number was bigger than one. Uh, now, for short, since 1 times anything is the same number, 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 0.5 is 0.5, so 1 times 10 to the third is the same as 10 to the third. So for the short, they just write 10 to the third. They don't even write 1 to the ten, times 10 to the third. What's 10 to the third mean? 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. Uh, now, uh, in the bottom example, in the bottom of example, it's a little bit messy, I made it messy, not purposely. Okay, so here it's 0. .000001. Now, first of all, is that number bigger than 1 or smaller than 1? Smaller. It's smaller, so we know we're going to end up with a negative exponent. Right? If it had been bigger than 1, we would have used a positive exponent. <clears throat> all right. Our first, thing we, first step is we have to move the decimal point so there's one number to the left of it. Okay, moving my decimal point this way is not going to get me there. So I move the decimal point here. No, that's, that's a zero to the left of it. Here, no, there's still a zero. Here, no, there's still a zero. Here, there's still a zero. Here, there's still a zero. I'll move it here. Ah, now I got a one in front of it, in front of the decimal point. So it's going to be one times, and how many places did I move that decimal point? Six times. So it's one times 10 to the minus six. You'd say, why minus? Because the original number was smaller than one because we're really multiplying times one-tenth rather than ten. So it becomes one times ten to the minus sixth, 
or for short, 10 to the minus 6. What is 10 to the minus 6? Well, if 10 to the 6th is a million, 10 to the minus 6 is 1 millionth. It's 1 millionth. Okay, now on uh, the next page, page A2, So I have been showing you how to convert from a normal number to exponential notation. How do you go in the opposite direction? How do you go from exponential notation backwards to an irregular number? So let, let's try it. Here's 6.3 times 10 to the third. So if I want to convert that back to a regular looking number, what do I do? Well, it says 6.3 times 10 to the third, I want to get rid of this 10 to the third. You'd say, well, just remove it, just erase it. <laughs> All right, in order, to me to get, in order for me to get rid of it, I have to move the decimal back to its original position. Now, this is a positive exponent, 10 to the third. It's a, it's a positive exponent, not minus three. So we know the original number is bigger than one. Mm -hmm. So do I move the decimal point this way? To the right. No, because if I move the decimal this way, I'm going to get a .00. It's going to be a small number, less than 1. So instead, I've got to move the decimal point three places this way so that the number is bigger than 1. So I move it 1, 2, 3, so it becomes 6,300. Everybody follow that? All right, now, here's a second example. Uh, 2.02 times 10 to the minus 2. So what's the original number? Well, <clears throat> I, in order for me to get rid of this 10 to the minus 2, I have to return the decimal to its original location, its original position. Since it's a negative exponent, it means the original number was smaller than 1. So do I move the decimal point two places this way? And is the answer 202? No. It's minus. It's a number smaller than 1. So I move it two places this way, and it becomes 1, 2, 0.0202. That's the original number. So, uh, I have given you problems to try. Uh, there are two sets of problems below. Uh, the first set uh, is to take a regular number and convert it to exponential notation. And in the second set, to go in the reverse direction. Now, there's only uh, five of each type. So you'd say, oh, that, that won't take me too long. Well, I should, in all fairness, I should tell you, take a look at page A10. On A10, there's a whole bunch more. So this is what I mean. We're going to be giving you homework in one form or another every single week. And what commonly happens is that people forget to do it. I think the best advice I could give you is form a study group. So you're going to st study or work with somebody else, and so even if you forget, hopefully they'll remind you. Hopefully you'll remind each other. Hopefully you all won't forget. All right, so you're going to remind each other you need to do this so that you've got it ready for the next time. We're now going to introduce you to the metric system. Now, the, uh, the, this is always where, uh, you know, I, I'm in almost... In, I'm going to try to avoid going on to a long rant as to why is the United States the only country in the entire world not on the metric system. We are the only country in the entire world. And now in a global economy, how can we foolishly not use the metric system? Let me just show you how everybody's on the metric system. Let's say that you are got to go head into Mexico. Right, so you, you go down, you're going to be off for President's Day weekend, so you're going to head down to Tijuana. So the moment you cross from San Diego into Tijuana, all the signs, everything becomes metric. The speed limit is going to be in kilometers, kilometers per hour. When you fill up your car with gas in, in uh, Mexico, it's going to be in liters. Well, if they tell you the distance between two cities, it's going to be in kilometers, kilometers. Is that right? Now let's say, yeah, but that's Mexico. You know, that's Mexico. So fine, let's head north and go to Canada. The moment you cross the border into British Columbia, 
or any other part of Canada, immediately all the signs become kilo kilometers per hour, speed limit, the distances become kilometers or kilometers, and the, uh, you're going to fill up your tank with uh, gas in liters. We are an island. Now, at one time when we were the biggest, most powerful, and we still are, country, but there weren't really a global economy, we could get away with it. We can't get away with this anymore. This is ridiculous. All right? Because if we're going to export to the world, we have to do it in units that the entire rest of the world is using. Now, there are companies in the United States that are marketing to the world. Coca-Cola. All the Coca-Cola is sold in liter bottles. Right? Don't you get a two-liter bottle? You can't get a pint of Coca-Cola or a quart or a gallon. They don't sell it in English units. They're marketing to the world. Now, the good news in terms of for uh, those of us in science and technology, science and technology has always been metric system. The, uh, uh, the uh, medicines have always been dispensed. When you get amoxicillin, you're getting 250 milligram tablets. So all the medicines are in metric units. When they weigh you at the hospital, it's going to be in kilograms. When they take your temperature in the hospital or in the doctor's office, it's going to be in degrees centigrade. So in, and when you use that iPhone and iPad, it's all metric units because that's what's always been done in science and engineering. And this is a science class, so we have to introduce you to the metric units. That's what's used. Uh, I might just say that all international athletic competition is in metric units. So if you watch the Olympics, they run 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters, 20,000 meters. Everything is in metric units. But I like to give examples that people can relate to us. So I've given you examples of, of, of commerce, like Coca-Cola, examples of gasoline in liters, uh, examples in uh, science and technology and medicine that uh, draw the drugs are in grams and milligrams. I've given you examples in international athletic competition. I know that for some of you are saying none of that interests me. Illegal drugs. <laughs> Illegal drugs are sold in metric units. So some of you have heard about, you know, you know, wanting to get some marijuana and you want to get a key of marijuana. Oh God. You know what a key stands for? A kilogram. All right, so if you want to deal with illegal drugs with the Colombian cartel, you better learn the metric units, okay? They're going to weigh out on that balance, those illegal drugs in metric units. So you're going to be taken every time because, you know, if you don't know the metric units. So I hope I've gotten to somebody in terms of all these examples. So whether you're interested in commerce, in a international athletic competition like Olympics, or illegal drugs, you need to know the metric units. So a meter, uh, a meter, a meter is just slightly more than a yard. I'm not asking you to know anything more exact than that. It's slightly more than a yard. A an American football field is 100 yards. A soccer field is 100 meters. So a soccer field is a little bit longer than an American football field. It's a little bit longer because a meter is a little bit longer. Some of you may have uh, run a 5K or 10K race. Has anybody ever done that? So 5K, what does K stand for? That's a kilometer, a kilometer. Five kilometers or 10 kilometers. Now, uh, the next one's really easy. A liter is really, for all intents and purposes, the same as a quart. A liter is ever so slightly bigger than a quart. For all intents and purposes, when you buy a two liter bottle of Coca-Cola, it's about two quarts, a half a gallon. Now, the unit that's uh, more difficult for us to grasp is grams. Uh, a, a gram is a very small amount by weight. It's 1 28th of an ounce. It's hard for me to even know what a 28th of an ounce is. And that's what a gram is. But what is a little bit easier for us, us to understand is that 1,000 grams is called a kilogram. Kilo means 1,000. We're going to go over this after the break. Kilo means 1,000. A, uh, a kilometer is 1,000 meters, kilometer. A kilogram is 1,000 grams. And 1,000 grams, or a kilogram, is about two pounds. All right, so it's a little bit more than two pounds. So a kilogram is a little bit more than two pounds. Uh, so you should have an approximate idea. Nothing more precise than that, but at least you should understand what a meter is, uh, a liter, and a kilogram. A temperature. 
Now, most of the world, including most hospitals today, measure temperature like of a person's body in degrees centigrade. So we use the Fahrenheit scale. A centigrade is what we should use. Here's uh, what we mean by centigrade, meaning uh, making more sense. Doesn't it make more sense to say that water freezes at zero rather than 32 degrees? On our Fahrenheit scale, at 32 is freezing. Why 32? <laughs> Does it make sense to say water freezes at zero? And on the centigrade scale, water boils at 100. Doesn't that make sense? You know, on the Fahrenheit scale, it's 212. Most people who use the Fahrenheit scale don't even realize, don't know what the temperature uh, water boils at in degrees Fahrenheit. All right. They, 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 in fact, most people, uh, if you say that it's uh, 31 degrees out, 31 degrees, they don't know that it's below freezing. Below freezing. 31 is below freezing. But uh, here, the centigrade makes a lot more sense. Now, I do want you to know, so I do want you to know the freezing point of uh, water and the boiling point of water in degrees centigrade. I also want you to know the normal body temperature. Now, we've gotten used to 98.6, 99 degrees, you know, degrees Fahrenheit, so we're kind of familiar with this. But I do want you to know that on the centigrade scale, our body temperature is 37 degrees centigrade. Before I talk, speak any further about the metric system, I want to review with you, even though I'm not going to test you on, the English system. It's the, the biggest objection that students always say about the metric system is, Professor Fink, you know, the metric system is difficult because I already know the English system. I'm going to submit that the biggest problem you have is you don't know the English system. All right, this is our English system. Now, again, I'm not going to test you on this English system. We're going to test you on the metric system. But let's just look at it so we understand before I cover the metric system uh, how our current, our regular English system compares. We have units for length, we have units for volume, and we have units for weight. And we similarly in the metric system have units for length, volume, and weight, as well as temperature. In the unit of length, uh, probably the basic unit of length in our English system is a foot, right? Everybody knows what a foot is. Now, we have units for measuring length that are smaller than a foot and larger, longer than a foot. Uh, and uh, one of the biggest problems with our English system is that it, it, it's not easy to remember how to convert from one unit of length to the next. Now, I think all of us know that there are how many inches in a foot? Twelve. Twelve. So that one we know. Now, not everybody knows how many feet there are in a yard. There are three. Now, if I ask you how many feet or yards there are in a mile, now this is the system you're supposed to know. How many feet are there in a mile? Does anybody know? 5,535 or something like that. No. Close. Does anybody know? This is the system you're supposed to know. Now, you know there's 12 inches in a foot. You know there's three feet in a yard. Does anybody have any idea how many feet or yards are in a mile? This is your system. 5,280 5, feet. So, and essentially, almost nobody who uses our system knows it. All right? So that's why I said that's the big problem. It's not that you know the English system, so now it's hard to learn the metric. You don't never learn the English system. Now, let's look at volume. So volume, we have uh, the basic unit of volume, we'll say, is the quart. And we have units of volume, like to measure water or fluids, milk, uh, that are smaller than a quart and larger than a quart. But again, our problem in the English system is how to convert from one volume unit to another. So, uh, for example, does anybody know how many fluid ounces make a cup? There are fluid, eight fluid ounces in a cup. You're exactly right. Not everybody knows that. Now, I know some of you are thinking, but weren't there 16? That's the ounces for weight. You see, we actually have two different types of ounces. We have fluid ounces and ounces by weight. And these are two different things. This is by volume, and this is by how much it weighs. And a lot of times, we just see that the price of something is per ounce. But is that by ounce by volume or ounce by weight? You've got to compare apples to apples, as it were, if you're trying to compare the prices. 
So these are two different kinds of ounces. That's another stupid thing about our English system, is we use the same word for two different measurements. But anyhow, there are eight fluid ounces in a cup. How many cups are in a pint? See, this is the system you're supposed to know. This is not the metric system. This is the one you know. But we don't know. There are two, uh, uh, there are two cups in a pint. How many pints in a quart? There are two. In other words, most of us don't know that. There are two pints in a quart. I'm not making this up. There are two pints in a quart. How many quarts in a gallon? Four. Four. So in other words, most of you would have only gotten 50% of that qu those questions right on the system you claim to know. <clears throat> now, uh, in terms of uh, 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 weight, so if the pound is the basic unit of weight, <clears throat> so... Uh, how many ounces, weight ounces, make a pound? 16. 16. That's where 16 uh, ounces by weight, as opposed to fluid ounces. So we have these measurements in our English system, but we don't really know them. All right, let's junk it. Let's just totally trash it, because we don't know it anyhow. Let's look at the metric system. All right, so here's something we do need to know. <clears throat> Now, this is, you're going to see that really, truly, this is much, much simpler. <clears throat> Again, just like for English, in the English system, we have units for measuring length, volume, and weight. Now, for length, the basic unit of measuring length is the meter. And we've asked you to know that a meter is a little bit more than a yard. And we've got... Uh, measuring units, metric measuring units that are smaller than a meter and lar longer than a meter. Now, uh, the, here's the cool part. We have these prefixes we use. So before I cover, before we look at this, let's look at the prefixes on the bottom of page A4. So on the bottom of page A4 in the lab manual, or the handout I gave you, these are eight prefixes you're going to memorize. Now, it's only eight. It's not even 10. So, so it may feel like 25. It may feel like 100. It's about eight prefixes. You need to memorize these. Let's look at them. Mega, kilo, base, deci, centi, milli, micro, and nano. And these prefixes are used throughout the metric system, and it makes it very, very simple. Mega mean is mega is abbreviated capital letter M and it means a million. It means a million. And how many zeros are in a million? Six. six. So we write it ten to the sixth. Right? We, uh, earlier we talked about exponential notation because really ten times ten times ten <laughs> times ten times ten ten multiply times ten six times is a million. So we write ten to the sixth. So here's where you're going to memorize. You're going to memorize capital letter M mega is 10 to the 6. These two things. You'd say, well, like, how, how should I do that? I would take a, uh, eight, you're going to buy eight little cards, right, index cards. You're going to write a capital letter M on one side of the card and a 10 to the 6th on the other. And you're going to keep flipping it back and forth until you remember that that capital letter M mega means a million. We use mega for all kinds of stuff. It means a million of anything. A mega meter is million, a million meters. Uh, a mega gram is a million grams. Uh, you say, I never heard of these. Well, okay, whether you heard it or not. How about megabytes in computer memory? So megabytes are a million bytes of information or data. Remember, I said all of science and technology is already on the metric system. So mega means a million. <clears throat> you need to memorize that. Kilo. Kilo is abbreviated with a capital letter, letter K, and it stands for a thousand. Now, a thousand has how many zeros in it? Three. So we write ten to the third, which just means ten times ten times ten, which is a thousand. So you're going to memorize ca uh, capital letter K is ten to the third. You're going to get a second index card and practice that. Now, we use kilo for all kinds of stuff. So a kilometer or kilometer, incidentally, here in this country we pronounce it kilometer, but most places in the world they say kilometer. But uh, it means a thousand meters. 
So if you ran a 5K race, that's five kilometers or kilometers, 5,000 meters. Uh, we, a kilogram is 1,000 grams. A kiloliter is 1,000 liters. Kilobytes is 1,000 bytes of information. On your electric bill, does anybody ever pay an electric bill? They measure your electrical use in kilowatt hours. Has anybody ever seen that? Kilowatt hours, 1,000 watts of hours of electrical use. That's how it's measured. So uh, again, in the world of science and technology, which includes your electric electricity, it's all metric. So kilo is a thousand. Now the base. What is the base? The base is the basic unit, and in the metric system, the basic units are, and I wrote m, l, and g, meter, liter, and gram. Those are the units we introduce you to before the break. A meter is the basic unit of length. A liter is the basic unit for volume, and G, gram, is the basic unit for weight. When we're dealing with the basic unit, I want you to memorize 10 to the zeroth. Now, 10 to the zeroth sounds like it would be zero, but actually 10 to the zeroth means one. It actually means one. So just memorize that the basic units, meter, liter, and gram, are 10 to the zeroth. Right? So that's a third index card. All right, the next one, deci. Deci is abbreviated with a little letter D. It means uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, or one-tenth. Now, one-tenth, Now, 0.1 or 1 tenth, can everybody see that that's 0.1 is 1 tenth? I think everybody knows that. Or as a fraction, it's 1 over 10. Now, if I was going to write, uh, uh, if I was going to write uh, a million, that's 10 to the 6, because a million's got six zeros, what would 10 be? 10 would be 10 to the 1th. 1 over 10 is 10 to the minus 1. Before the break today, we talked about how in exponential notation, if, you, if it's a positive exponent, you're multiplying times 10. If it's a negative exponent, you're multiplying times 1 over 10. So 10 to the minus 1 is 1 tenth. That's literally what it means. So you're going to memorize deci means 1 tenth. Now, centi. Centi is abbreviated with a little letter C. It means 1 one hundredth. And 1 one hundredth, of course, is, could also be written 1 over 100 or 10 to the minus 2. So 10 to the 2 is 100, 10 to the minus 2 is 1 over 100, because there's two zeros in 100. So you're just going to memorize that. So we talk about decimeters and centimeters. We talk about decigrams and centigrams. These are all multiples of 10, and that's the beauty of the metric system. Now the next uh, prefix is milli, which uh, is abbreviated with a little letter m. It means 1 one thousandths. 0.001 or 1 over 1,000. 1 over 1,000. I actually wrote it right here. 1 over 1,000. And so uh, how many zeros are in 1,000? 3. If we wanted to write 1,000, it'd be 10 to the third, but 1 over 1,000, 1 one thousandths is 10 to the minus 3. So you're going to memorize that a small letter M, milli, is 1 one thousandths. <clears throat> All right, micro, micro. Micro is abbreviated with a, uh, a, a mu. You'd say a who? All right, so since we used the letter M for milli, we cannot use a letter M for micro. So instead we use what's called a Greek letter M. Now some of you are familiar with fraternities and sororities. You know how they name themselves with Greek letters, you know, alpha, kappa, kappa mu, you know, phi, epsilon, delta, all right? Well, the Greek letter M is mu. You don't have to know that, but it's mu, and it's written like a script M. So that's the symbol that's used for micro. A script U uh, stands for micro. Micro is one millionth, one millionth. Now, if a million is 10 to the sixth, one millionth, one over a million, is 10 to the minus 6. So you're going to memorize that that micro means a millionth. 
So we talk about, uh, we use uh, that term micrometer, right? Microgram, microliter. Uh, we talk about microsecond. A microsecond is a thousandth of a second. Uh, we talk about a microscope, which is going to allow us to see in the micrometer range. And the uh, last of the units we're going to ask you to know is nano. Yes, it's named just like the or it's very small iPad. I'm sorry, the uh, I, yeah, well, the iPod. The iPod. Remember when they came out with the nano? Because it was really small. Nano means a billionth. Now, the uh, abbreviation that's used is a Greek letter N, which is kind of written like a script N, nano. It's a billionth. A billionth, now a billion is 10 to the ninth. A billionth, one over a billion, is 10 to the minus ninth. So it's very, very small. Now, what's interesting is that in the world, let's say, of computers, we're getting more and more memory, so we're up to terabytes of data, right? Ter gigabytes and terabytes, if anybody knows about that. I'm not going to ask you to know what tera and giga, giga and tera are, but those are really big amounts. And then at the same time that we're getting more and more bigger units for storing data information, we're also making everything smaller and smaller. So we're going from microtechnology to nanotechnology. And in fact, there's even something smaller called picotechnology. So uh, that's 10 to the minus 12th. So basically, all of modern science and technology is expanding both increasing numbers and smaller numbers. We're getting bigger and bigger numbers, like for storing data and information, and smaller and smaller numbers for size. Of, uh, of the size and space that it takes to store that information. Uh, and in terms of processing speeds, how quick your processor processes, they talk about microseconds or nanoseconds. You know, how many, how many uh, 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 operations can a computer perform in a certain number of microseconds or nanoseconds, right? Millions of a second or billions of a second or even picoseconds. So all of this is used everywhere. In a global economy, we have to keep up with the entire world. The old days, the world had to keep up with us. Nowadays, we have to keep up and be ahead of everybody in terms of science and technology. That's what drives modern, the modern world. So um, now what's interesting, uh, let's, let's make this a little bit more useful, a little bit more interesting. Um, you know, I try to have people interested. I already talked about illegal drugs, uses a, a metric system. You know what's interesting? When the, uh, you, uh, when the uh, uh, 13 colonies uh, had their uh, American Revolution against Great Britain, so at the time, Great Britain used a monetary system of pounds and, and uh, pences and shillings. Anybody familiar with this? That's the currency units that they use in England, right? They talk about an English pound and shillings and pences and stuff like that. And uh, actually, we got off that uh, English uh, system, and we actually created a metric system. Now, uh, before I tell you more about that, uh, do, you, do you know who's on like an American $1 bill? Who's on a dollar bill? George, good old George, okay. And uh, who's on a $5 bill? Hey, Blinken. Okay, who's on a $10 bill? Now we know, yeah, it is, it, is, it is actually Alexander Hamilton. Now who was Alexander Hamilton? We know George Washington was the first president of the United States. We know Abraham Lincoln was, anybody know which president? 16th president. I'm not gonna test you on American history, but I, some of you are maybe history majors, all right? So Alexander Hamilton, who was he? Second president? Who is Alexander Hamilton? He's on the $10 bill. Most of you didn't know who was on the $10 bill. It's Alexander Hamilton. Who was he? Was he a president? He was not a president. He's the only person pictured on the common bills that we use who was never a president. Who was he? Why is he on the $10 bill? He was the first secretary of the treasury under Jefferson. Alex, I'm teaching you history. All right, first secretary of the treasury. All right, and he created our monetary system. He could not be president of the United States. Anybody know why? He's not native. He wasn't born in the United States. He was actually born, I believe, in the Dominican Republic. Does that sound right? Mm -hmm. Is it born in the, uh, one of the Caribbean islands? 
So he could not become president by official law. Anyhow, so you're looking it up right now. Yeah. All right, good. All right, so that's why we don't have to learn anything anymore. Is thank God we've got you know access to computer information. We can Google it. So uh, anyhow, so a Alexander Hamilton, and some of you are f uh, familiar with him because he actually was uh, killed in a duel with Aaron Burr. Right? They got mad at each other, and in the old days. The, you know, if you think politicians are bad now with what they call each other, in the old days when you insulted a politician, they say, I'll see you at the dueling range, you know, tomorrow and we'll have a duel. And they actually fired their little uh, uh, guns and uh, Aaron Burr, who was mad at uh, uh, Alexander uh, Hamilton, uh, he lo uh, Hamilton lost and he was shot to death by Aaron Burr. Anyhow, they didn't even arrest people then because they basically said, yes, I'm going to duel you, you're going to duel with me, and you agree, I agree, and we'll meet you and we'll just shoot it out. So anyhow, um, so he created the monetary system. Now, interestingly, the monetary system created by Alexander Hamilton was a metric-based system. Here's why I say that. So we have a coin called a dime. Dime, dime is the French for deci. So our dime, Dime is Greek, in, in French it's dime, dime in, dime in English, for dime in French, and deci in Greek. Why is it called deci? It's one tenth of a dollar. Deci means one tenth. Now, we have a smaller, uh, we have another coin, it's a copper coin. We call it a penny. What's another name for a penny? A cent. Why is it called a cent? Because centi means one one hundredth. A cent is one one hundredth of a dollar. So our coinage is a metric based. We threw out, we never dealt out with the ink, stupid English system. We changed the monetary system thanks to Alexander Hamilton right at the very beginning. And it's unfortunate that they didn't change our measuring system right at the very beginning because it would have made more sense. All right, so now you know, in case anybody ever asks you, who's on a $10 bill? It's Alexander Hamilton. Who was he? He was the first Secretary of the Treasury. And you understand what dime means. It's a tenth of a dollar, and cent, or cent, is one one-hundredth of a dollar, as in centi. So now you know a little bit about your, uh, the, the uh, coins and bills that are in your pocket. All right, so uh, all we do is we take these prefixes and we put them in front of the metric units. So, in the metric system, we have units of length. If the basic unit is meter, abbreviated with the letter M, so then it, we have millimeter, centimeter, decimeter, kilometer, and megameter. All the, what does this mean? A milli, what does milli mean? A millionth. So it's a millionth of a meter. What's, I'm sorry, let's take that back. Milli is a thousandth. Milli is a thousandth. Micro is a million. So millimeters, a thousandth of a meter. Centi is one thousandth, I'm sorry, one hundredth of a meter. Decimeter is a tenth of a meter. And we have a meter. Then a kilometer, kilo means a thousand. So that's a thousand meters. Mega is a million. It's a million meters. Now here's what's beautiful about this. You'd say, well, it doesn't sound so beautiful. Here's what's beautiful. In the English system, 12 inches make a foot, 3 feet make a yard, 5,280 feet make a mile. Can you see that there's no pattern? Mm -hmm. The beauty of the metric system is that everything is a factor of 10. This is a thousandth of a meter. It takes a thousand millimeters to make a meter. This is a hundredth of a meter. It takes a hundred centimeters to make a meter. Decimeter is a tenth of a meter. Kilometer is a thousand meters. Megameter is a, a million meters. Everything is simply a tenth, ten, a hundredth, a hundred, a thousandth, a thousand. It's not 5,280, which nobody knows, one person. That's the beauty of it. Now, uh, in the uh, volume for metric system, so if the basic unit is liter, if the basic unit is liter, so we can have a milliliter, which would be a thousandth of a liter. We could have a deciliter, a tenth of a liter. We could have a kiloliter, a thousand liters. Everything is exactly parallel. You remember this stupid English system? Two, uh, eight ounces is a cup, two cups is a pint, two pints is a quart, four quarts is a gallon. No pattern. Totally different pattern from 12 inches a foot, three feet is a yard, 5,280 feet is a mile. Everything keeps changing. So this is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Now for weight, gram is the basic unit. 
But we can take these same prefixes and have a milligram, which would be a thousandth of a gram, a decigram, a tenth of a gram, a kilogram, which is a thousand grams, a megagram, a million grams. So whether we're measuring length, volume, or weight, we use the very same prefixes, and they always mean the same thing. All right, so you're going to memorize those prefixes. And again, we want you to know these abbreviations and they're the way we express it with exponential notation. Now, what we want to do next is show you how to use uh, the metric system. But again, before I show you how to use the metric system, I want to show you how to use the English system. What if we had the following uh, question? Point 0.4 yards equals how many inches? Now, I'm not going to give you questions dealing with our stupid English system. But does anybody know how to do this? No. Right? If you, were, if you wanted to uh, uh, buy carpeting or drapes, don't they commonly sell carpeting and drape material by the yard? So what if you measured and you is something in a, a curtains or car, you know cur, curtain material or drape material? You've got so many. You want to know how many yards is an inch? We got uh, 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 0.4 yards is how many inches? So if if something is measures 0.4 yards, how many inches is that? Now this is the English system you know so well. Huh? Nine. Do what? Nine inches. Is it nine? Okay, so what did you do? How do you figure it out? It's not nine, but how do you figure it out? Oh, or do we just guess numbers until somebody says we're right? No, I, I was breaking it down to feet, but I was off my math. It is 16. <clears throat> no, it's not that. It's not 16 either. This is a system we know so well. Here's what you'd have to do. Okay, there's a few ways you could do it. First of all, how many inches are in a yard? 36. 36 inches in a yard. There are 36 inches in a yard. There's 12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, so you could say 3 times 12 or 36 inches in a yard. This is our system we know so well. I'm trying to show you we don't know it at all. All right? So, if, if, uh, if, one, yard, if one yard is 36 inches, and it is, all right? So what you have to do is you multiply 0.4 yards times 36. And if you do that, you get 14.4. All right? Let's try a similar question using the metric system. It's 0.4 meters is equal to how many, let's say, millimeters. Now, asking 0.4 meters is how many millimeters is very similar to saying 0.4 yards is how many inches. It's just a lot easier. So we've measured 4 tenths of a yard. We want to know how many millimeters that is. Now, in order to solve this, you do have to know what these prefixes mean. But you memorize them. If you don't memorize them, you won't be able to do these problems. It's as simple as that. Obviously, most of us never memorized yards and inches and miles. But this is at least easier to memorize. <clears throat> All right, so um, we're going to give you a three-step process to answering these. Many of us can think metrically, and we don't have to go through any kind of calculation. It just you know, pops out. But for those of us who want a step-by-step -step way, on page A5, I've given you three steps. Three steps to convert from one metric unit into another. I'm not going to ask you to convert metric to English or English to metric just to work within the metric system. So the first step is, and this is the quote hardest, express the metric unit as an exponent. Number two, subtract the exponents from each other. That will tell you how many places to move the decimal point. And thirdly, move the decimal point to the right if you're going from a larger to a smaller unit. So you'd say, what? OK, so let's see how this works. So the first, here's our question. 4 tenths of a meter is equal to how many millimeters? All right, what's the first step? The first step says, express these metric units in exp exponential form. That's what it says, as exponents. So you'd say, I don't get that. What do you mean? Meter is 10 to the zeroth. And you might say, yeah, where'd you get that from? 
On the bottom of the previous page, the basic unit meter is 10 to the zeroth. And you're going to memorize that. It says that right here, 10 to the zeroth. You do have to memorize these eight things. All right? So you write 10 to the zeroth. Now, what does milli mean? Milli means 1 one thousandths or 10 to the minus 3. It's on the bottom of the previous page. You have to memorize that. All right, so that was the hardest step, and it's really simple if you just memorized eight things. All right, so we've got 10 to the zeroth. That's the basic unit, and 10 to the minus 3. Milli means 10 to the minus 3. What's the second step? The second step says subtract the exponents. In other words, what's the difference between a zero and a minus three? And the answer is three places. Let's help you see that. This is a number line at the bottom of the page. What does it show on the number line? Right, here's minus four, minus uh, five, minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five. Does everybody see that? So we're asking, what's the difference? How many places difference is there between a zero and a minus three? One, two, three places. Now, if you're wondering, well, like, how do you, how do you subtract that? I mean, how does, what, if you were going to do that math, what would it be? It's 0 minus a minus 3, right? And 0 minus a minus 3 is 3. But the easiest thing is just look at a number line. All right, so you'd say, what, what does that mean? I'm getting lost. What that means is you're going to move the decimal point, which is right here, three places. That's all you have to do is slide this decimal point three places. All right? So the third step, how do I know? Do I move it to the left or the right? So the third step says that you move the decimal point to the right if you're go converting from a larger unit to a smaller unit. Or you move it to the left if you're converting from a smaller unit to a larger. So if you can remember which direction you move it, when you're going from a larger to a smaller, you go in the opposite direction for the other direction. You'd say, I'm lost. What's bigger, a meter or a millimeter? Meter. A meter. A meter is a little bit more than a yard. A millimeter is a thousandth of a meter. So we're going from a meter to a millimeter. We're going to a smaller unit. So what did we just say above? When we're converting to a smaller unit, we move it to the decimal to the right. So it, it, how many places are we supposed to move it? Three places. Now we know which direction. We go 0.4, 1, 2, 3, boom. The answer is 400. So 4 tenths of a meter is 400 millimeters. Now a lot of us who think metrically already, one meter, uh, it, one meter is 1,000 millimeters. A half a meter, 0.5 meters would be 500 millimeters. 0.4 meters is 400 millimeters. I don't have to do any calculation. But if you need to go through some steps, those are three steps. Let's try uh, another one. On the next page, all right, so there it is. There's the answer at the top of uh, the page. Okay, let's try another one. So the next question here is, uh, you know what, let's just do, do one more. I don't think we have to belabor this. Let's do a, the hard, a really hard one. Let's convert kilometers to millimeters. Now, when we're going to convert kilometers to millimeters, this would be similar. Asking 0.13 kilometers is how many millimeters, that would be similar to asking... 0.13 miles is how many inches? And I don't know if anybody can do this. If we were asking 0.13 miles is how many inches? That's our English system. In order to, 0.13 miles, in order to convert that into inches, you'd have to say, okay, point, uh, miles, one mile is 5,280 feet. So I'm going to multiply 0.13 miles times 5,280 feet. That gets me into feet. Now, tw uh, 12 inches is a foot. So I'm going to take that number, multiply times 12. So you actually have to take this number, multiply times 5,280, and then times 12 to figure out how many inches are in this mile. Let's see how it is in the metric system. It's much easier. All right? 
actually I wrote that right here. So in the metric system, 0.13 kilometers, kilometers is how many millimeters? So the first step, the first step is convert these uh, 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 metric units into exponents. What is kilo? 10 to the 3. It was listed on the two pages ago. You have to memorize that. 10 to the 3 means 1,000. What's milli? 10 to the minus 3. It's a, a thousandths. All right, that was the hardest step, and it's simply a matter of memorizing. All right, now, what's step number two? Subtract the difference between these exponents. What's the difference? How many places difference is there between a plus 3 and a minus 3? Six places. Now, if you, you can see that on a number line, right, at the bottom of the previous page. All you have to do is just compare how many places there are between a minus 3 and a plus 3. There'll be six places. Or if you, you know, that's what I would do, but uh, if you were just subtracting, you're really just saying uh, 3 minus a minus 3 is going to be 6. All right, so that means we're going to move this decimal point six places. Now, the third step, do I move it six places to the right or six places to the left? We said when we're going from a larger unit to a smaller unit, we move it to the right. All right, so we're going from kilometers, which are like miles, uh, to millimeters, which are small. So we're going to move it six places to the right. So I just move that decimal point from 0.13. I move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and it becomes 130,000. So 0.13 kilometers is 130,000 millimeters. Now that was a lot easier than multiplying times 5,280 and that, then that times 12. So all it is is simply a matter of following this three-step process. I actually have a, a, something that might help you remember this moving to the right. If you, uh, anybody a poli-sci major? Any poli-sci majors in the class? Nobody? Uh, let me ask you a question. Now, today we've learned about uh, who's on these uh, dollar bills, right? We know uh, who's on a $10 bill now. You didn't know that. Uh, you know why it's called a dime, right? It's a tenth of a, uh, a dollar. Uh, let's teach you something else. Um, you've all heard the expression, you know, they're a right winger or a left winger. Does anybody know where that comes from? Yeah. Yeah, I know, but where did they come with, with right or left? Huh? Yeah, I know, but who came up with this? Like, I'm going to tell you who would come up with it. It was, it, who came up with it was Napoleon when he created the first government under Napoleon in France. The French Revolution occurred after the American Revolution. Anybody know history? All right, so uh, when Napoleon created his legislature, he put all the conservatives on the right side of the hall, and he put the liberals, the socialists, on the left side of the hall. So because of that, the conservatives are called right-wingers, and the liberals or socialists were the left-wingers. That was based on which side of the hall he put the legislators in the, uh, in the uh, first French uh, 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 government. Now, um, so you'd say, what's that got to do with anything? So uh, if somebody is a right-winger, a conservative, do they believe the federal government should become bigger or smaller? Smaller, smaller right? So in other words, if you're going from a larger unit to a smaller unit, you move to the right. If, on the other hand, you're going from a smaller unit to a bigger unit, you move to the left. It's like whether you want the federal government smaller or larger. Okay, if you, don't, if you like that, fine. If you don't like it, just memorize it. <laughs> yes? Um, I have another like, visual that could help. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Can I write it on the board? Yeah, sure. You can write it right here. A kilometer is greater than a millimeter. Right. So it goes to the right. Okay. This is like an arrow. Okay. And then a millimeter is less than a kilometer. But then you have to memorize it. Yeah, you still have to know which one's bigger. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. It's the same kind of the same difference. You still have to know. Uh, all right. So, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, now, uh, I've given you some examples, and on the pages A6 and A7, right, here's some to try. Now, remember, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about units of length 
or units of weight or units of volume because in all these cases we use these same prefixes milli, centi, kilo, it doesn't matter and it's simply a matter of those prefixes that we memorized on the bottom of A4. This continues on page A7. So you might say, okay, so I got 16 of those to do. Well, actually you have more than 16 because if you look on page A11, there's a whole bunch more. The idea is, when you take a math class, don't they give you practice problems to do? To help you, so you just do it enough times until you get the pattern. So this, this is not complicated math. We just want you to do it enough times until you get it, you get the pattern. Okay, so we have been talking about, so far today, exponential notation of how to write numbers using exponents. And we've been learning a little bit on the metric system and how to convert within the metric system. I'm not asking you to convert from metric to English or English to metric, just to work within the metric system, which is much, much easier than working within the English system as I've tried to convey to you. 